Uh, so he turns to me, and uh, he says, um, hey, I've, uh, I've seen you cycling around uh, before. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, we're going to like, you know, bring our, our coffee shop relationship up a, up a notch and like, <laughs> like have a conversation. This is, this is pretty exciting. And um, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. I love, I love cycling. It's, like, it's, it's, a, it's relaxing. It's great. And he's like, I, I got a question for you. And I'm like, great. Like, this is great. Um, and I, I thought like, maybe he's going to ask me about like, gear ratios or like, you know, any tips about his own like, cycling or how can it, you know. Um, and I'm like, yeah, sure, what's, what's the question? And he's like, why don't you ever wear a helmet? And I was like, um, uh, uh. And he's like, he's like uh, you know, because I, I see you're on, you, you got your kid with you, and like, you know, that is a terrible, like, example, like, for your son. And I'm like, uh, uh, uh. Um, and, and then he talks about, like, you know, like, two of, of his friends that have, like, hurt themselves very badly uh, cycling from not, from not wearing helmets. And, and I'm just like, ugh. You know, like, there, there's not a thing that I can say. Like, I don't have, like, a, a word or a syllable of, of defense. Like, I'm just, I'm just caught. I'm exposed. And I'm there. My bike is outside, and I got no helmet. And, and he's seen me a lot of times. And... Um, and, I, and I'm just like, this is, this is horrible. This is terrible. <laughs> and, and, like, I don't, and, and then, like, and then I, like, just ordered, I just ordered my coffee to go, and I just left. <laughs> and, and I was, and, and, you know, like, honestly, like, my thought was, like, I am never going back. <laughs> like, I, I never want to see that man again. Like, I'm caught. I'm exposed. Like, I feel stupid. Like, he, he's, like, questioned me as a cyclist, which that doesn't matter, but, like, as a parent, and, and, like, he's, he's right. And, you know, I didn't tell anyone. Like, this is the first time I've told anyone this. Like, because it is, it is, like, super embarrassing. Um, and uh, so, yeah, my, my, my initial, like, again, like, total shame. Uh, total, I'm totally caught. And, and then my, my second response is, like, I, I never want to see this man again. Uh, I never want any of these these 845 regulars to see me again. Like, I, I'm caught, and, and I'm exposed. Um, and again, like, I didn't tell anyone. Like, I decided to tell everyone at once a couple months later on. But, but again, like I said, that my desire was to, like, um, just, like, cover my losses and, and, and cut that relationship, not that it is one. Um, it's funny, it's Cork, because it's small, so, like... One of you is probably related to him. <laughs> but um, don't, yeah, like, he's not the bad guy. I'm the bad guy in this story, okay? Um, so, so two things. So I got a helmet. <laughs> and I try to wear it as, uh, as much as possible. No, I'm not, I'm not going to wear it for the whole thing. <laughs> um, got a helmet, try to wear it. And then, and then also, like, um, I've, I've, I've resumed my occasional uh, coffee consumption at, at said place. Um, but anyway, so, so how many of you are like me where um, the prospect of, of being confronted and called out, of having not a leg to stand on, not a bit of defense to give, of, of someone, be it God. Actually, I don't mind if it's God, because I know he knows. But, but when someone else notices something and points something out, uh, when someone else like asks a probing question, and I have a choice of either embarrassing myself or lying, um, like those—that's the hard situation. And how many of us have that same experience that I had, where your first thought is, "I don't ever want to see them again." I'm gonna find a new church. I'm gonna find a new community. I'm gonna stop going to community group. I'm going to uh, avoid them. I'm gonna—I'm gonna sit on a different side of, of the church building. I'm gonna, you know, unfriend them on whatever social media. Um, and and I gotta say, guys, like that's that's wrong. Like, like, that is an act of, of love. Like, perhaps it oh, absolutely makes you feel uncomfortable. And there's probably ways to do it in a rude way or in a, in a loving way. But uh, our desire to, to cut relationship and, and run away, that is something that we should overcome. Uh, in fact, I think we should aim towards saying thank you or, or, to, to, li- or to, to ask yourself, like, well, are, are they right? Because they're not necessarily right. Like, I was 100% guilty. It's possible that someone can accuse you of something they're wrong. But, but to think, well, at least they love me enough to, to say something about it. They want to see restoration and growth. They want to see uh, holiness uh, in my life. Uh, many, many years ago, um, uh, back when I lived in, in the States, um, 
friend of mine, uh, Justin, said, hey, let's go out for breakfast. I said, great, no one ever takes me out for breakfast. And, uh, you know, we go to Denny's, which is this restaurant that um, you guys don't have here. And, uh, you know, order like the, I got the vegan skillet, because I was, I was vegan back then. And I was eating my vegan skillets, and we're just talking. And he's like, hey, can I ask you something? I'm like, yeah, sure. And he's like, why is your, your Christian faith like only visible on Sunday mornings and I don't see any hint of it throughout the week? And I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, uh... And maybe it's because he bought me breakfast or because I had a, a relationship that went back for years. Um, but uh, I, I heard him out. I, I realized that he was not being needlessly cruel nor insulting, but was, was in his love and his friendship expressing his care for me. And I, I really look back and I, I think, you know, that breakfast was a turning point in my life. Uh, I probably wouldn't be in Ireland if it not been for that breakfast. I uh, don't know if I would have uh, stuck it out with my then girlfriend, Rachel. That, you know, it's like, that was a turning point in my life. And it involves someone like saying something kind of uncomfortable to me. Um, and so, again... This is not saying to you guys, hey, go be rude to everyone, you know. Um, but it is to say that perhaps there, there are times when an expression of love involves saying an uncomfortable thing. But aim to be understood. Aim to show it as an act of love. Perhaps tell a story. Buy a breakfast. <laughs> um, and, and communicate that because that can just be such a, such a painful blessing. Such a, a, a pummeling blow uh, for the good of your friend, your fellow member of this congregation, that person in your community group, um, that can be just the best thing in the world. And so uh, we see that uh, that's not the case. David could just send for an executioner and say, get this guy out of here. But, but he lets Nathan continue to speak. Um, we see that he is a continual presence uh, before David throughout the rest of this book. Um, and uh, what I think is maybe just the most um, exciting in all this is that if you look to uh, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 14, it gives a list of the, king, of the sons of King David. We see later on, uh, David has a son, and he names him Nathan. Um, so when he's thinking of baby names, he, he wants to name his son after the man that got in his face and, and told him what a, what, a, what a creep he was being. And so I, I just think that's such a, a little glimpse into the, the thankfulness that David had towards this man that was brave enough to come into the royal presence and tell him that he needed to repent. And so here we go. You are the man. Thou art the man.